Kia ora Year 12 and 13. This is a short video going through the next section of our trig unit, which is looking at trig identities. So an identity is just an equation that is true for all possible values of the variable. For example, if I write 4x plus 16 is equal to 4 times x plus 4, that's an identity. It doesn't matter what x is, that statement will always be true. Now that's different from an equation, which is more like this. 4x plus 16 equals 0. The only solution to this is x equals negative 4, right? Whereas this one, x is any real number. All right, so when we do trig, often we want to be able to prove trig identities. And in this video, I'm going to look at three building block identities that we'll use when we do harder ones. So this is based on delta pages 318 and 319. So you can follow along with that if you want. Just be really careful in this section of the topic that your setting out is very clear. Um, this is emphasised in delta and we'll be emphasising it in class as well. Okay, the first identity we're going to look at is, is a pair of identities, and it's looking at the relationship between an angle x and its complement. Now, I'm going to do this in degrees, probably what you're more comfortable with still, but it's going to work just the same way if we switch 90 degrees to pi on 2. So we're going to start off by drawing a triangle, a right angle triangle. So here it goes. So there's a wee right angle triangle, and we'll do some labelling. We'll call that angle up there X. Right, and there's my right angle. Now we know that angles in a triangle add to 180 degrees. So this angle here is 90 minus X. We're going to whack three side labels on A, B, and C. So nothing special about this triangle except it's got a right angle. Right, now we want to show that the sine of angle X is equal to the cosine of the complement. So we're going to start off by using so katoa. Okay, so sine of x is equal to what? Well, it's going to be equal to b over c. And cosine, I'm trying to think which way I'm doing this. So cosine of 90 degrees minus x is equal to b over c as well because the adjacent side here is b and that equals sine of x. Okay, so that's our first proof for this one here. The second one, let's look at cosine of x. So cosine of x is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Cos of x is equal to a over C sine of 90 degrees minus X is also equal to A over C which is cosine of X. So just notice that I've put this line in here which kind of ties everything up so it says step one here over here look there's the ziggy ziggy red laser thing this side is looking at sine of x. So first we say what sine of x is. Then we say that cosine of the complement is the same thing. And then we say that, look, that equals sine of x. Okay, so that's the, the last line of our proof. Over here, cosine is equal to this. Sine of the complement equals this, which is the same as this. Right, one more thing you might see is that sometimes when we're working with identities, instead of having an equal sign, we'll have this, three lines instead. It's just a signal that, hey, look, I'm dealing with an identity, nothing more than that. Right, on to the next proof. Right, so we want to prove that sine of x divided by cosine of x is equal to tan x. So I'm going to start with another triangle. Right, so here we are, we've got, we'll make angle x up here. Label our three sides, a, b, and c. Right. So sine of x is equal to b over c. Cosine of x is equal to 
a over C. 10 of X is equal to B over A. So there are definitions. Now we're going to start to do the proof. A really common way to go is to start on the left hand side. And sometimes for that we write down LHS, left hand side, colon. Sine of X over cosine of X is equal to B over C divided by A over C. Wouldn't you know it, I've run out of space on the slide. It equals B over C times C over A. Right, so I'm just going to go up to the top here. And that equals B over A, which equals 10 of X. Okay, so that's it. So we're done. And we sometimes write RHS, just to show, hey, we know we're at the end of the proof. Okay, so a good general strategy when you're working on trig identities is to start on the left-hand side, work your way towards the right-hand side, and hopefully you'll get there with not too many steps. Right, on to the last one. This is a really crucial relationship between the square of sine and the square of cosine. So we're looking to prove that sine squared of x plus cos squared of x is equal to 1. So I draw my triangle. Here's x. Okay, I'm going to put on three sides, a, b, and c. Now, I'm doing this one a very slightly different way from delta. Uh, we are going to use Pythagoras in this proof. So we have sine of x is equal to b over c. Cosine of x is equal to a over c. So let's start on the left-hand side. So left-hand side, sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is equal to b over c squared plus a over c squared. Right, a little bit of algebra. b squared over c squared. Oops, b squared over c squared plus a squared over c squared equals b squared plus a squared over c squared. Right, I just need to insert a new slide. So on the last slide we had equals b squared plus a squared over c squared. Right, and remember our triangle looks like this with a, b and c. So we know, whoops, Oh dear, what's happened there? Okay, here we go, we're back again. We have got a relationship between A, B and C because of Pythagoras. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So we write down equals C squared over C squared by Pythagoras. So c squared over c squared equals 1, which is the right-hand side. Alright, you don't really need to write that down. You just need to show that you've got to 1. Okay, so that's um, the three building block trig identities. Um, so now we are ready to try some harder ones. So we'll move on to that next.